Today, a glimmer of hope in attempts to mitigate the impact of coronavirus. The UK government announced they had struck deals for 90 million doses of vaccines in development by three drug makers. It builds on deals already struck with Oxford University and AstraZeneca. If you talk to the scientists, they think the sheer weight of international effort is going to produce something. Vaccines have to go through different phases of clinical trials before they can be used in the general population. Currently, there are 140 vaccine candidates in pre-clinical studies, so that's in the lab and in animals. A vaccine then goes into small-scale human trials called phase one. After that, they may go into larger studies called phase two trials. And then if they're safe and show some evidence of efficacy, they may go into large phase three trials to see just how effective they are. The UK government has already invested in some vaccine candidates. Valnavas is in preclinical studies. Imperial's vaccine is in phase one trials. Pfizer BioNTech vaccine is in phase one and two at the same time to speed things up. And the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has entered phase three clinical trials that are being run in Brazil and South Africa. Today, the results of the Oxford vaccine phase two study were published in The Lancet, and it does show some promise. The vaccine produces an immune response, both antibodies and T cells, and the trial didn't reveal any serious adverse effects. But it's not clear if the immune response it produces protects against infection, nor is it clear that those most at risk of COVID, the elderly, are protected. It was only tested on people aged up to 55. We can measure the immune response, but until we actually go into clinical trials where people um, become infected with the virus or not, we won't know whether those vaccines are actually going to protect people from infection. We know that older people tend to develop relatively weak vaccine responses to things like influenza vaccine, and there are various ways that that can be improved. The vaccines the government has invested in work in different ways to produce an immune response. The announcements that we've made this morning basically show that the UK is at the forefront of global efforts to both source and develop vaccines across a range of different technologies from these different leading companies. The basic way in which vaccines work is that they trigger the immune system to recognise the virus that you're trying to protect against. So it's really just using your own immune system to generate a natural immune response. You can do that in various ways. You can inject protein. Um, <clears throat> you can sometimes inject protein combined with something else that triggers the immune system to recognise it more strongly. Or in the case of the new vaccines that are being developed in the UK, there's two new approaches being taken. But campaigners say there's a lack of transparency about the deals that are being done. We'd love to understand better the, the kind of agreements that uh, are being signed and what whether they present good value for money for British taxpayers and whether they're a good idea for the NHS. We know nothing about the pricing that's uh, attached to the deals that have been done today. What's been really interesting is that all of the drug companies that are involved in this have said, you know, it's far too soon to talk about the prices of medicines. We just need to focus on the development. But that's really distracting from the reality that now is the best time to be striking deals that give us good, long term, affordable access to these uh, treatments and vaccines. And unfortunately, we haven't yet got that. Even though the pace of development is unparalleled, there's still some way to go before effective vaccines are produced for all who need one.